Hey man, thanks for joining me today. Um, wanted you here because as one of our experts uh, with portable speakers and specifically our Evolve family, right? This family of products has been out for now just a couple of years was our first one. Uh, the Evolve 50 came out first. Um, but really, you know, we know they sound great. We know they look great. We're selling tons of them. They're easy to move around. But wanted to dig into details with you. And, and because you know mm -hmm. so much about it, um, I want to start way back at the beginning. Evolve 50, being the first one to come out, why did we do it in the first place? I mean, where right. did it come from? Yeah, so the Evolve systems um, were built on a philosophy of something that's really easy to put together, really easy to transport, and of course, because it's an EV-powered speaker, it has to sound good. Right. So we combined um, just a real simple, uh, easy, assemb easy assembly. We have just the three pieces with the top, the pole, and the subwoofer. Right. So that is just one, two, three, boom, you're set up and you're ready to go. Yeah. I think as far as the, the philosophy and in, in who it was designed for, right? It was really designed with that portable person in mind, right? It's Absolutely. portable sound reinforcement. But, you know, there, there were other columns on the market, but we wanted to do something mm -hmm. that was an actual PA, right? right? And it had to have the performance of, of a PA, right? It had to have... Uh, a, a clean look, an easy setup, um, and, and then you got those SPLs that, that really could, could, could use mm -hmm. it in, in a meaningful way. It's not just a cute little column exactly. in the corner. I mean, th this, this thing, thing. Can, can do some serious, uh, serious events. Right. Um, so as far as the, the actual uh, aesthetics of it, um, that to me is, is one of the most interesting things. And the first thing you notice, obviously, as you get to these things is, is man, um, when I look at it, it looks really cool, but it also kind of blends into its environment exactly. at the same time. It's kind of weird. Um, but what was that design process like, and what are some of the unique things that you guys did here? Right. So with the design, I mean, it's not just simply making something skinny, right? Because anyone can just make a line. So we really focused on, of course, keeping that column aesthetic, but making sure that the, the chamfers, the angles, uh, the break in the line for the J-curve, all of that was well thought out so that as exactly as you said, when you're looking at it, it kind of blends in, but it, it still has a really good look on its own. So it's not standing out and jumping out at you, but when you do see it, you can see it's, you know, very yeah. pleasing. But some of the other things that stand out to me is, is the details of the product, right? You know, when you look at um, just the subtlety of how it was built, you know, there's no cables. I mean, uh, you know, all of our connections are made to the back. Um, which is really cool. Um, so that hides all the cables, but then there's no cables going in between the sub and the top. I mean, exactly. How did you guys do that? Yes, exactly. So to, in order to keep that really, uh, you know, compact look without having the clutter of the cables, is we ran actually the cables internal to this okay. uh, connector pole, and we actually have you'll see four conductors there, and that gives us, uh, you know, a redundant connection for extra safety and reliability as well. Oh, really? Okay. And then it's, there's actually like a magnet in there, too. Good point. What's yeah. that for? Yeah, exactly. And the, so there's a magnet on both ends that allow um, it to latch to in the subwoofer and then also on the top. Right. And that adds additional security. So once you put it in, it clicks together, it clicks itself together and holds itself steady when uh, while it's operating. Kind of lets you know that, boom, I'm solid, I'm good to go, but at the same time, exactly. it's, it's super easy to disassemble. Um, and, and again, no cables uh, means that clean look, and, and obviously, you never forget your cable, right? <laughs> right, you don't have to bring those cables. No one can accidentally unplug them, you know, as they're walking by. You don't uh, have to buy them either. <laughs> and you don't have to buy them, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're all there, so that's cool. That was one thing that stood out to me, but just in, in the pole itself, it, you know, obviously hiding the wires inside was brilliant, um, it, but it would have been real easy to just use a round pole or just a rectangular pole, um, but you guys even put, you know, beveled edges here, on the sides, which again is so subtle, um, but it makes it look a lot more um, refined than right. it's not just a pole. It's right? about the continuity of the design. So the chamfers and angles that we use on the column, the top po column portion, we make sure and continue through the pole and then also into the subwoofer. So as you said, it looks as if it's just one, because it is just one system designed right. all together, as opposed to just grabbing some part spins like a speaker pole and sticking it on a sub. We designed it all uh, to be, 
you know, one coherent system. Yeah, there's nothing that, no detail was overlooked here. So we mentioned the connections being on the back of the sub, which is great to hide the cables. But what you guys also thought about is, you know, in order to uh, make adjustments to your levels or the DSP, right, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want that screen pointing at my ankles, right? Exactly. We wanted to aim that up. So that's actually at an angle too, which was a really good idea. Mm -hmm. did, I mean, was that part of the thought process? Or? Absolutely. I mean, sight lines are important. So like you said, cable management, keeping them at the back so you don't see them. But you have to access the controls. So by putting it on that, on that angled panel, like you said, you have really good sight lines from the top to make a quick adjustment. Or if you're down on, on the ground plugging in cables, everything's right there. And the overall then ergonomics of the system, I mean, the, uh, you know, real easy to set up, obviously. But you've got handles on the sides. You've got this handle on the top. And that actually, uh, you know, serves as, as a great way to just carry, carry the sub in one hand. But it seems to me that this is also part of a bigger design, right? It's not just a handle here. <laughs> right, it's, it's part of the overall design aesthetic as we're continuing all those lines and those chamfers down into the sub so that it's not just a, a plain flat panel, but it also has some function. As you said, we have the integrated handle which makes it easy to pick up, but the surface also discourages um, you know, those guests at, at, at parties who, who may think it's a convenient place to, to maybe put their beer or something that might spill and damage your speaker. So it kind of discourages clutter from gathering on it during a show. Right. Of course, I mean, you know, you can't totally stop stupid. Someone could do it, but it looks like I shouldn't. Right. And, and that's, I think, an important thing to just subtly tell people, no, go away, no, no, no drinks here, buddy. I, I, I've, I've been through that myself. It's very frustrating. <laughs> so, um, you know, kudos to, to thinking of that, that level of detail. It's really cool. But um, as far as the actual performance of, uh, of this, this is kind of a deviation from what we normally do and, and what normally is thought of as a powered speaker, right? I mean, this is a complete system, right? We've got the amplification. You've got some mixing functionality. Um, you know, right on the back, you've got uh, a lot of drivers in here, right? This isn't uh, a, right. like a 12 inch two way with a compression driver. What, what's actually going on right. in so, here? So as you said, you know, a traditional uh, two way speaker would have a woofer and a compression driver. Here we have eight three and a half inch uh, drivers and they're actually coupled to a custom designed waveguide that we use. That, act, that ensures that we get a wide 120 degree wide coverage. Okay. Um, and then the slight J angle as well gives you this it gives you the straight out uh, coverage that you need, but it also angles down. So and that coverage people, is about what? Uh, horizontally, it's? Horizontally, it's 120 degrees wide. Okay. And then vertically, it's, it's, it's a 40 degree asymmetric. So it's straight out and then even a little bit down so here. So straight that, out this way, but also down a little. Yeah, bit. so that okay. way you get all your audience, whether they're standing, whether they're sitting, um, as long as they're not crawling on the ceiling, you're in good Pretty shape. much, you got okay. it. Yep. <laughs> so that makes sense. Now, you mentioned uh, three and a half inch drivers, which is a larger driver than most anyone is using for columns of this size, right? So that is, it, where's the benefit in that? Right. So the uh, transducer sizes were chosen based on hitting our, our, our SBL targets that we wanted to hit, as well as keeping, uh, you know, a nice, wide, even frequency range all the way up, uh, up into the high frequencies. So... Uh, we get a lot more output than some of uh, some of the other product on the market because of that, and we do it across the entire frequency range, whereas uh, that coverage may not be as even a, on, on other products. Yeah, so. and that's what I notice when I listen to Evolve versus uh, other column systems on the market is uh, ours has a really strong mid and mid bass that I think is probably coming from there. You know, a real mm -hmm. natural tone. It doesn't sound... Um, artificially scooped and, and odd. Right. You know, you've got a really good full spectrum audio. So the drivers are a good size and we've got a lot of them, um, but they're also not just your standard magnets, right? Right, right. So we're using neodymium magnets and those and that's to, you know, A, to reduce weight, but also to get the uh, extra output that we need. Okay. And then you also mentioned the waveguide. Now that's something different. Uh, you know, obviously EV invented you know, the constant directivity horn, which mm -hmm. was a, it was an early waveguide, right? But this is a little bit different. You've got waveguides over each individual right. driver in here. And then how is that different from what competitors are doing? Um, some competitors aren't using waveguides at all. They're using no, uh, you know, beamforming a horn. They're not using anything to get the directivity that, that they're claiming. Right. Um, and so 
you know, they're just kind of splashing the audio out there and hoping just, it covers. Right. Whereas our approach is we are ensuring that we have that acoustic coverage across that 120 degrees wide, 40, 40 degrees vertical, and that's across all frequencies. So there's no major dips or, or peaks or anything like that. So we're steering it with the waveguide, but that also helps with the driver's interaction with each other, right? It's actually helping achieve better summation between them at you the got same it. time, you got right? It. Okay, the, very good. I mean, that's obviously uh, a lot of thought and, and that's why it sounds so good. Um, the sub being a 12 inch sub, nice and compact, adds a real punchy sound to it. Um, but there's so many things going on with all these drivers. Uh, tell me a little bit about the amplifier in here and, and right. how are we doing that? Right, so as you mentioned, all the wiring is internal, which is great. Um, and it's all going back to that single amplifier. It's a thousand watt class uh, class D amplifier, excuse mm -hmm. me, um, powering both the the subwoofer and the tops. Okay, and so that's that splitting the power between the top and the sub. And then as far as uh, you know, other electronics and, and things that are in it, um, you know, what sort of flexibility do I have to to really make changes to the sound? Where do, where does it all start? Right. So. Um, like a lot of electro voice portable speakers, we have our QuickSmart DSP, uh, which is going to give you, you know, gain control, stuff like that that's really simple. But also there's EQ control. We have preset modes that make your, your setup super easy. So if you, uh, you, you know, if you're doing a live gig or maybe you're, you're a DJ and you're doing more of a club gig, we have those presets to just dial it in and, you know, you know you're going to sound great. Yeah, I guess those presets are great. Um, it's got a really unique function as well, kind of uh, and another technology that we kind of stole from our ETX family. We put, we put delay in this box. Why, why would we want that? Right, so there is a system delay in this box, and that's great when you have, uh, say, a larger setup where you're running multiple speakers, uh, you know, in a delay line, if you will, okay. um, so that you can time align all of those so that, you know, a user that's maybe hearing a little bit of speaker one and speaker two, they're not hearing like an echoey back and forth Blend sound. Blend it and make that exactly. uniform sound. Okay, and that's real easy to do. I've, I've seen that just in the DSP, you dial it in, mm -hmm. uh, just basically by distance, right. feet or meters, right? You just go, how long is that distance from here to from here? Speaker it's one to it's two, 50 yep. feet, you dial in 50 feet, Away you go. Everything's um, time aligned and you're set. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's incredible the the stuff that's in here. You know, it's it's mostly about the sound quality to me, but also those aesthetics. Um, but very flexible on the back end. You know, you've got a, a lot of inputs. You've got uh, what a couple of combo jacks right, that are quarter of... inch and XLR. And then what else do we have? Right. So you got the mic line inputs as well as a stereo RCA input. So if you have a line level input you want to use there. And of course we got stereo Bluetooth. So uh. you can pair your mobile device to it and stream directly here without any cables whatsoever. Okay. So I just pair my phone to it like I would any Bluetooth device, yep. play some music and I'm off and running. Really. Exactly. Wow. I mean, there's so much in this thing and this really started it all for us, right? Evolve 50 has been just a juggernaut. Um, I'm, I, I love this product it is it's hard for me to say it because i love them all but <laughs> this is still my favorite i mean it is what it is it is my favorite uh speaker that we make but that's not to overshadow its baby brother right if this is for uh you know a serious pa and we're doing some some good medium size events here right. you know um i hate to put a number on it because there's so much about mm -hmm. you know the venue and 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 the actual program material you don't want to put a number on it but you know it's going to cover a lot of events for you, but for something a little bit more portable um, and maybe a little bit more geared to, you know, musicians that need more more inputs and things like that. I mean, that's kind of where the 30 was introduced and, and kind of is, is aimed at that market, Exactly. Right? So the Evolve 30M, um, it gives you, as he said, it's, it's just a little bit more compact, so that ups, ups that portability factor, so it makes it super easy. Um, you know, if you got to carry it on the bus or or, or the train or whatever, yeah. or even in the back of you know, I mean, it's ridiculously light. I mean, in the back on. of your car, uh, it fits in a trunk really easily, uh, but it still it still has great sound. Um, it's got more inputs on the back. We have an eight channel digital mixer in there, so you got four mic lines, uh, a stereo line in, and, and Bluetooth streaming as well here. Okay. So that, like you said, it's great for those people who who. Uh, need more inputs, but maybe need, uh, are doing a little bit smaller gig, your cafes, your bar, or not your bars, but your uh, tap rooms, things like that. Okay, and you've got uh, then really a, 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 an expanded input, um, you know, a more compact system. You got a 10 inch sub, um, 
This is shorter than that one now, so right. are we using less drivers in here? We are. We dropped from 8 to 6, and then these are 2.8 inches uh, versus a 3.5. But they're also neodymium magnets, again, to uh, make sure we're getting the most output we can out of that compact column, okay. but also keep the weight down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's stunningly light. But we're doing the same thing with the pole as well, right? Um, and while this is a single pole, right. I see a break in this one here. Right, and this one's actually a two-piece pole, and if you just hold up the column there and you hold these next to it, you'll see that makes them approximately the same size, which allows it to slide into the accessory backpack to just increase that portability factor. So it breaks down a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, just to make it a little bit easier uh, and that, to transport. That backpack's actually included with the system, though, yep, too, absolutely. right? So I get that backpack, these three pieces go in that, and then I've just got my subwoofer and I'm good to go. Exactly. Um, it's all right there and, and super easy to still put together, um, but still ends up being almost the same height as the 50, which is cool, because um, you got to get that height up, right, to get that sound out above people's heads. Mm -hmm. um, and the overall aesthetic otherwise looks very similar. I mean, you can't really tell them apart. I, I have a hard time other than the size, right? I mean, they're, they're nearly identical. So this one does also then have Bluetooth streaming, um, but when you make that Bluetooth connection, you can also, through our app, mm -hmm have full control over this mixer. And and so tell me about what we can kind of do with that, right? Because we've got a lot of inputs, which is great, but it's we still have to control it right, now, right? right? So um, with, with our app, um, you have full mixer control. So you can adjust the individual gain levels. You have individual channel EQ. Uh, we have built-in effects, 30 effects that are actually pulled from you know our Dynacord heritage from oh. our from from our from our sister company, yeah. um, which you know those are professional studio grade DSP effects. Then we yeah. got those built into here, so there's reverbs, delays, reverb chorus, so good, right? Uh, um, we have those built in, so you can really dial in your tune, uh, or d dial in your sound to get it, get you know, get it the way you want it. There are instrument presets, so whether you're using uh, a guitar or a vocal mic or a bass, whatever it is, everything just. Is, is there and easy for you to set up. We got a whole bunch of stuff running in the background to do it. But if you like to tweak it yourself, we also have a lot of EQ in there. There's a seven band graphic EQ yeah. uh, on the main output as well. So you can really dial it in. I uh, mean, we're in Minneapolis and I like funky music and Corey Wong is one of the funkiest guys out there. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I, actually, I love his tone and his sound, and we actually just developed a preset right. for him too, right? Exactly. We worked with Corey. We had him come into our uh, to, to our space here, work with our engineers, uh, sit down with his, his guitar, and just tweak and tweak and tweak and uh, get this thing to sound the way that he would want it to sound on stage. So there's actually an input preset there as well. Um, you know, you dial it in, Corey Wong, you plug in your guitar and you can get the same sound that he would get. I don't know if you can play like him, but you can, you can certainly, <laughs> I can't, you but. can certainly <laughs> but. get a little bit of that tone, right? If right. nothing else. So then, and I love that sound. It's just a really nice, clean, direct, yep. you know, electric guitar sound. And so, yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff in Evolve 30M. Um, but you know, now that we had the 50, we had the 30M, right? Mm -hmm. Where do we go next? Is that the new one? Is that this? Is this is the new baby, yeah. right? This is the 50M. So this right? is the exactly this is the Evolve 50M where um, it's it's like the Evolve 50. It's the 12 inch sub. It's the eight three and a half. So you have that higher output level, that a little bit uh, you know more impact from the subwoofer. Mm -hmm. But then you're also getting the additional inputs and that flexibility of the built-in mixer. And we actually uh, were able to cook up. Uh, a, a new little feature on the Evolve 50M that actually allows you to uh, link two of them together and actually use double the input seamlessly. Okay. Um, you know, as if it were just one larger mixer. So you basically have crammed the size, shape, and performance of a 50 with all of the inputs and flexibility uh, and mixer capabilities of a 30. It kind of married those two and then you know, taking it one step further. And, and I think that's the the quick smart link feature yep. that, that we have over here, right? Exactly. So the big new feature in the Evolve 50M is this quick smart link. So you turn it on, right? It fires up, and then with a simple connection of the quick smart link, we can then do what? So what's great is it allows you to double all the inputs and treat them as one mixer. 
Mm -hmm. It's also a digital audio transport, so your stereo signal is is sent is uh, shared between the two. Okay. Um, and it sets up in just in just two easy steps. And show me how that works then. So I I plugged it in, and then what do we do? Yeah. So once you're powered up and plugged in, you can see it automatically knows that you're you're connecting the QuickSmart Link, and it asks you, hey, do you want to send or receive the parameters? Um, and this is just the parameters are on this unit versus the second one. Which one do you want to copy? For here, we're just going to send the ones from here. It then is going to ask, hey, is this speaker stereo left, stereo right, or is this a mono setup? And you just pick which one it is. And that's that's the house stereo house, uh, you know, the, the what the audience will hear. You just click there and you're set and you're done. That's all it is. And so actually this is now sharing the mixer section from both the left and right. So I can plug in my guitar to the left, I can plug in a bunch of mics to the right, and you will see that now in the app. Right, you'll be able to control all inputs from, uh, from the app. Um, uh, so now that we're connected, um, and all the inputs are now, they're now shared between that link and the two, and in the app you can see we're linked here, and you just go into one, you can edit the mixer, and here you have the eight channels on one, but just simply click and now you're on the second one. Just a simple swipe or click back and forth, and you can control all inputs as if it was just one larger mixer. So they're total, totally shared in one complete system. So with a pair of Evolve 50Ms now, how, much, how many inputs do I have here? What, what's going on? How much stuff yeah. do we got now? Yeah, so you have all mic line inputs. So there's four on each, so that's a total of eight mic or line inputs. There are, now you have two stereo line inputs, and you still have both Bluetooth connections should you need it. And that's just connecting that, that network cable between the two and, right. and away you go. I mean, it's that simple. Right, and you can control all those inputs from the app. You can see we're linked here. There's the link icon showing that. Um, but the other cool thing is all your system parameters are also linked. So things like the volume are automatically linked between the two. So you don't have to go back and adjust it on each one. It just does it automatically. The system EQ, the mode, whether you're in live mode, club mode, it changes it all, uh, or it syncs it all between the two, so it's just super easy to run both systems at once. And so you can run that app remotely from an iOS or Android device, anything? Exactly, yes. Okay, and then if I don't have a phone or a tablet with me, can I still make those changes just on the speaker itself if I needed to? Absolutely, all, all the controls are also you know, available through, um, through the DSP here with the encoder knob, the individual input controls, everything that you would need, uh, you can also access from the back of the LCD. Wow, oh, very cool. I mean, that's that's actually, I mean, expanding into a system, when you think about how much stuff you can do with this, I mean, this is the next evolution, right? It used to be all passive speakers and, and outboard amplifiers. Then we started cramming amplifiers into the speaker. Then we started cramming signal processing into the speaker. Now we're adding, I mean, this is a full-blown, I mean, it's a 16-channel mixer into the speaker. All I need is this and my guitar or a mic, and I'm good to go. Well, right, yeah, and you can do a lot more than just one guitar and one mic. You <laughs> right. can actually do a pretty pretty decent sized band with this. Yeah, band. and bring the whole band. And I mean, I guess you can sell the bus and buy some Evolve and you're good to go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>